Okay, so this will be a tutorial on how to do uh, The Legend of Zelda, or Zelda 1, Hyrule Fantasy, whatever you want to call it, um, how to beat it using arbitrary code execution. Um, for this, I'm going to be using the Wii Virtual Console. So just so you want to see, this is the Wii Virtual Console that I'm using. And um, the file names are going to be the first thing that we need to make sure is correct before we start. Um, it's also important that we're starting that we're using the Japanese version because we need to use Japanese characters. Um, but besides the Wii Virtual Console version, you can also use the Famicom Disk System version and the I think the Japanese GameCube Collector's Edition version will also work for this. Um, it's not necessary to, to use the other two. I think it's very risky to use a Famicom disk system. I would not want to break one. And the GameCube collector's disk, well, those are kind of expensive. So the virtual console tends to be the easiest to work with. And it's also fairly consistent for timing as well. So with that in mind, um, I think the other thing to note is if you're going to be doing the virtual console on the Wii, you should probably use a um, GameCube controller with a pretty decent D-pad. So the native D-pad for the GameCube controller is not so good. Um, it's kind of small. Um, I'm using an adapter that lets me use a, a Super Nintendo controller, but the only ones that I need are the... Um, the A and the B buttons on it. So, alternatively, if you have a Wii, I guess what it's what's it called? The classic controller will also work. Um, and the um, there's a couple of other ones. I think that the NES Mini and the Super NES Mini both came with some controllers that could be plugged into a Wii Mote. So there's a couple of options that you have for controllers rather than just sort of settling with whatever the GameCube controller can do. Anyway, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is check that the file names are correct. So let's time how long this takes me to explain. Um, so the file names need to be, well, what I have right here. Uh, so let's go into the kind of file edit menu. And so I'm going to make a little pointer right here. So the first file name needs to be Zelda and then this symbol three times, where this symbol is sort of the first one that you can see right here. The second file name is, well, um, this symbol and H, and then it alternates between this symbol and D three times. So the first symbol is right here in the menu, sort of second group. And it's the second row right here. Uh, this H, if you want, H is right over here. Then this sort of swoopy symbol with the, uh, the sort of other swoopy part. I, I don't know Japanese, I'm sorry. But um, this symbol can be found right here. Um, the third row, I guess the fifth column. And then D, if you want, D is all the way up here. And we just sort of go back and forth between that thing D, that thing D, that thing D. The third file name, well, it's again this first symbol, the one, the same symbol that started off second file name, then it's the letter I right here, and then that swoopy thing D again, so I'm not gonna sort of go too much into that, that symbol, and then a D. And then we have these two other symbols, I don't know what their names are, but it's going to be this one right here in the second to bottom row, uh, sixth column, I guess. Make sure that it's this one and not this other one that kind of looks like it. it. It needs to be this one right here. Um, and then I don't know what the name of that symbol is, but it's right up here. And then the number six, which is right down here. And then lastly, that swoopy symbol is right here, the bottom row, fifth column. Okay. And once we have all three file names set up, we should be good to go. Okay, but you might want to check to make sure that they're all correct before starting. And 
we will be using the first file name, and since it starts with Zelda, that means we will be in the second quest. So all of the things that we're going to see from the start begin in sort of second quest mentality. So once we're sure that the file names are all correct, we can begin the run, and we should be good to go. So the first thing that you want to do is hold to the left and up to go into the old man's house. And then immediately after entering the old man's house, we're going to hold right. And then during the text, we're going to hold up and to the right so that we collect the sword. Um, as soon as you collect the sword, you should pause. And since this is the Wii Virtual Console, we don't need a player two controller. I'm just going to tap up and select, which brings us to the continue menu. And then I'm going to press start to continue. So now we are outside of his house. It saves us from walking out. Um, then we're going to move up. And then we're going to go left. Now I like to sort of go halfway between these two tiles so that I can use the texture of the ground above to position myself for a screen wrap. I'm just going to kill all these enemies here. So the reason why I prefer doing screen wraps is because um, it avoids walking through and around and dodging all of the enemies. So what you want to do for the screen wrap is position Link five pixels away from the border like this, tap down for a single frame, like that, which you can do pretty easily by just flicking the D-pad if you have a, a decent controller. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to kind of get used to how that works. Um, but of course, each controller's sensitivity is a little different, so you might want to just, you know, find where the comfortable zone of that is. And then once we've done that, we've confused the game about where Link's position is. So if we just move to the right, it'll wrap him around the screen like that. And eventually we'll come out on the other side as if it was a giant cylinder, um, because the game just sort of doesn't handle uh, X values that large, and it just sort of puts him on the other side of the screen rather than continuing to add values to his X position. So we can do that, and then we'll go left, and it'll transition the screen again. I'm just going to kill these Octoroks so that they are not a problem. All right. So um, one thing that I want to mention before going on is there's two animation frames for Link walking. There's this one where he's standing upright, and then there's that one where he's sort of taking a stride. So on this um, spot right here, this is the correct frame for when he's taking a stride. And... All right. That's the correct frame for stride. I'm... There we go. And that's the correct frame for if he's standing upright. So upright, um, I tend to Let's bring back the pointer. So I tend to use this shield and I try to line it up with this one little bump in the texture right here. Um, you can come up with your own visual cues if you think other ones are easier, but depending on what kind of um, screen resolution you're dealing with or how sharp the picture quality is, I think this is probably the easiest one to tell. Um, alternatively, you can see that Link's hat makes this sort of shape right here. You, you can do a whole bunch of different um, visual cues for this. Um, or if you start at the bottom, there might be another visual cue that you can do. However, we're going to need to transition up um, later anyways, so it might be in our interest to move to this top part anyways. So once we've done that, um, we just need to flick down once, like so. Um, and if you flick down an extra time too many, um, you'll see either two animation sprites or Link moves rather than just turns around in position. And if you then try, you'll see it will not confuse the game and you will instead just transition normally to the other side. So here's the correct screen flip around. Now, the reason why that one failed was because I didn't move far enough away from this loading zone right here. You usually need to go about that far or maybe a little bit farther and then head back. 
So now this is again the correct sprite. I'll flick down once, like so. And we did change animation frames, but we did stay in the spot, so it should still work like that, All right? So now um, I'm gonna go up here for the next one because for this one, I like to use this textured wall right up here, specifically this, um, let me use the pointer that I have right here. I like to use this little segment right here um, for the uh, kind of visual cue that I use to determine if I'm in the right spot. So here I'm not far enough to the right yet. So if Link is taking a stride, this is the correct frame for the correct visual cue. Whereas if Link is standing upright, then this is the correct visual cue. And now I will again just do a single tap down like that. And we should be good to screen wrap around. Now the reason again why I like to do those screen wraps is not just because they are faster, which I believe they are, it's also that you don't have to worry about these Octoroks shooting things at you or the, um, the Zoras shooting the fireballs at you. But once we've kind of come over to this screen, this screen has the potion shop with the old lady, we're just going to go up and then we're going to go up again. I am sad about all this. There we go. I got lucky with a heart. So we're going to go up again and slash through that one. Now for this screen, um, since we're on the second quest, this is where level two is. So I'm just going to get rid of all these levers so that we can um, enter level two without worrying too much about enemy positioning. Give me the money. So, there we go. I think that got rid of all. All right, so the level two entrance is normally right here below this Armos in the top middle. So if you want, what you could do is you could just go down and run right to him. Because as he's loading, uh, the Armos won't deal any damage to you. Alternatively, another approach that you can take, so I'm just going to go back up, is I like to go between these two, as long as the uh, levers let me. Whatever. So... I go up between these right here, and as I'm going up, tap this one to the left and then hold it down because it starts his spawning animation just a little bit. Now, if you've taken damage, um, you can just pause, up select, and continue, and then that will refill your health, and it won't affect anything, so it should be good to do that. We'll just proceed through level two where RNG unfortunately kind of rules this speed run. So you're gonna wanna get past these Gibdos um, and you can use the invincibility frames to try and clip through them, which maybe I'll show later on. Um, but you basically just wanna get past them however is possible. I usually like to go like that. That's how you would use the invincibility frames to round a corner like that. Um, I would suggest practicing this room a little bit in case you get some weird RNG values, but once you've kind of gotten past the Gibdos, you want to go up, go up again, and unfortunately we got bad RNG with these Zoles, um, but normally, like almost always, you should be able to just walk straight up and it won't affect anything. But if they're in the middle like that, you kind of have to dodge them. Again, you just need to go straight up with these keys and maybe slash at them. Um, these Gibdos can move to the left or the right, and depending on which way they go, you might want to change which way you go. But otherwise, just go up into the next room where we have to kill a bunch of keys to open a shutter door. So I'm not really good at this game, so please don't judge my gameplay too harshly, but once we've killed them all and dodged all of these fireballs, we're gonna go into the next room where we will see Manhandala. Now the strategy normally is to just book it as quickly as you can into the next room. Um, if Manhandala is in the way, you can um, slash your sword and get iframes on the little heads on the side, the same way that we would with Gibdos. Or you can see if you just sort of hang out in the doorway like this, um, Manhandala can't shoot you with the fireballs. So this is another 
strategy is to just wait in the other door and then once the coast is clear just scramble all the way over here in the next room you just want to dodge all of the dark nuts there's no point fighting them you don't need to fight them you need to kill those two keys right there because they're in the way almost always um, and then there's this secret door that you go through or secret passageway I don't know what it's called um, and then we just round this corner probably want to walk on this particular half tile rather than going all the way down because it saves a little bit of time but it's not terribly important and then we're going to just collect the flute if the keys are in the way slash at them and after we collect the flute we will do the up and select and continue trick again now for the next part I like to use the timer to tell exactly when I'm supposed to press the flute and so this might be specific to the Wii Virtual Console version. So as soon as the screen goes black, I split like that. And now I'm going to add 50 seconds to that timer, and 50 seconds after that is when I should be playing the flute. So I'm going to head down, down, and then to the left, and we're basically just making our way over to the graveyard. Dude. It doesn't matter if you take damage, as long as your hearts are not beeping, the arbitrary code execution will still work. So um, we again want to do a screen wrap right here. This is the correct frame if he's standing up. Um, that's the correct frame if he's taking a stride. And we now just walk over to the graveyard. Alternatively, you can just use the Lost Woods if you know the order for beating the Lost Woods, which I believe is just up, left, down, left. So, sorry to spoil that puzzle if you wanted to do it, but the next thing that we're going to do is spawn 10 ghosts. So, we need to, or guineas, I guess is what they're called in this game. But I'm going to do it in a particular way so that there are 10 of them and the, I think, I don't know which one of the ghosts, but we need a particular ghost's motion to not be zero. So I'm going to spawn the first eight very quickly, and then I'm going to spawn the last two, um, and then pretty sh shortly afterward I'm going to pause. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, wait, one, two. All right. So now I'm going to wait for the melody split. So now I've spawned my 10 guineas, and I'm going to wait for the melody to reach a particular spot. Uh, we don't need the pointer anymore. So, there are two parts to the melody. The overworld melody. This is the long part. It has that bass arpeggio right here. And now we're back to the short part, the first sort of shorter part. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to just play the flute on the long melody right after the second arpeggio. So here's the first one. Doodaloo doo. Doodaloo doo. Right? So that was the timing that I used. There was a minor chord in the overworld melody, and I'll show it afterwards, but um, once we're past there, the, the run hasn't officially ended yet. We need to attack those two, and then move into a position where we are right next to Zelda. Um, I like to have fun, so here's oop, damage boost, and now we can actually go past Zelda, which is neat. I don't think there's any way of collecting that silver arrow over there, unfortunately, but, um, you know, we just go over into that spot and then we beat the game with Zelda. So, that should be all that's needed. Um, what's nice about the Wii Virtual Console version is there's no flashing at the end. You saw there was just one, but um, I don't know what the game says. It's probably Peace Returns to Hyrule or something like that. Anyway. Um, you see the credits, which are thankfully very short, and then, um, yeah, it just takes you all the way to the last screen where 
you see the Triforce like that. Uh, below the word Nintendo. Or above the word Nintendo. So. Um, that should basically be it. That's the whole run. Let's go back to the overworld. Just so that I can show you the part of the melody that I use. Okay, so I'm just gonna collect the sword again. Right? So I'm gonna slash the sword on the parts of the song that I think are safe when you can blow the whistle. All right, now generally, like I said, I use 50 seconds after my exiting level two. So I left level two on the collect flute up in a split, so I would play it at 1414 was the timing. Okay, so this is the long melody. So that's about where I would start playing the flute, just to be safe. For the short melody, I'm a little bit less confident about it, but I think it's right here. Like that. So those are the timings where I would use. Um, However, if you really want to see specifically what parts of the melodies work and do not work um, and really get a feel for how, um, for like the earliest time that you can play the flute and all of that information, um, I'm going to link Sock Folder's video below. Um, it's a Twitch video, um, but, you know, it's, it's very informative and worth watching. Um, I don't remember exactly when in the video uh, Sock Folder shows it, but there's a part where you can actually see the, um, the melody as it's being played, and they wrote a script that sort of says, oh, this is a good part to play the recorder, or this is not a good part to play the recorder. So I would recommend watching the video up until that point. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you can just watch some of the other speed runs to get, you know, ideas for other tricks. Um, possibly, like, learning the different patterns for the fights inside of level 2. I would for sure practice these screen wraps because I am really bad at them. I don't know if I went far enough. So, there we go. That's the right pixel. Boom. Like, those screen wraps are very difficult to do quickly and consistently. So the more you practice that, probably the better your speed running will be. Um, and just also be aware that um, if you take damage before uh, playing the flute, um, it will crash. Specifically if you have two hearts of damage. So right now it's not beeping. Uh, if I take more damage, I need to be at one heart or less. There we go. So now it's beeping, and the arbitrary code actually will not work if we are in this situation. Um, but I think that should basically do it. Um, if you do have any questions, um, I would suggest asking the Legend of Zelda Discord, the speedrunning Discord. Um, you can message me if you want, but I'm not super proficient in all of the technical details. Um, but I would say that there are plenty of people who are more knowledgeable than I in that speedrunning Discord. Um, otherwise, good luck with your speedruns, and uh, hope you enjoy this uh, tutorial.